All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the vlog here. Uh, today we've got some cool stuff going on, but not for a really cool reason. And I'll get into that in a little bit here, but I'm gonna be going over cycling your tank and checking water parameters. It's something that I had to do a lot of research on. And so we're going to go over a couple of the basic bits of information that you'll need to make sure that your tank is cycled and you know what to look for when you're testing water parameters for your aquarium specifically if you have an axolotl. So as mentioning earlier, we're gonna have some cool content today, but not for cool reasons. I don't know if you can really see very well here, but uh, Frankie has started to show a couple of little white spots on his gills, like little cotton balls. You can barely see them back there on that top right hand gill that he's got. And his other top left one is getting a little bit frayed at the top. It looks like Frankie might have gotten a fungus. And that's why we are going to go over water parameters and cycling your tank today. And Frankie's gonna spend some time in the quarantine tub. So we're gonna document our little quarantine tub, quarantine and quarantine, and then go over some of the specifics on how to help if you get those little cotton ball thingies on their gills. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, Frankie's got some stuff on his gills, which is something we're gonna check um, by putting him in quarantine. But I did notice that his water parameters were off this week and the nitrates were really high. So we're gonna go over what that means, right? So when you get a tank ready to go, the tank needs certain things in the water to be at a certain levels. The main ones, this is just the main ones, is going to be your ammonia, your nitrite, and your nitrate. So what happens is ammonia in the water creates this reaction that gives us nitrates and nitrites. As long as those are in certain parameters and certain levels, everything in your tank should be okay, but you gotta kick your tank off with some kind of ammonia level. Now, some people use, already used filter media from a different established tank. Some people use some quick starts, which I've never had any kind of um, success with. And some people use matter, like live matter, like food or um, other dead fish um, can help get the right kind of bacteria and ammonia and stuff like that going in your tank to make sure that your tank is established when you're ready to add fish. When you have an axolotl, you need to make sure that your tank is established and that your parameters are in good order before you even put your animal in. And you want to make sure that the tank is established for a couple of weeks, I would say, before even adding your animal in. Make sure those parameters are correct. And the way that I usually do it is with filter media from an already established tank. I've got a six gallon tank that's got some little nano fish in it. And I just use an old filter from there, put it into my uh, axolotl tank anytime my parameters crash, my cycle crashes. And that will automatically kickstart the tank. I give it a couple of days, maybe a few weeks. Make sure that the tank parameters stay where they're at without any living organisms in there. And then I add my axolotl back. So he's been in quarantine a couple of times for different things. And this is going to be another one just on this little journey here. But the way that we test for these different things is going to be this little thing right here. Now this is an API master water kit for fresh water. It can be about 25 to $30. You can get them at pretty much any pet store that sells fish. And this is going to have pretty much everything that you need. Um, I've heard that the test strips don't work very well. I've never used them, but I've heard they're not that great. So this is probably your best bet, bang for the buck. And it comes with a whole bunch of stuff inside. Now, I don't typically test for pH levels and things like that, which you can, and it's important to do. But when I'm testing my tank, I test ammonia, nitrates, and nitrites. So when you test your ammonia, you have two bottles here, ammonia bottle one and bottle two. You're going to take an empty test tube, which they provide for you. You're going to fill it up to the line with water from your tank. 
And then you're going to add eight drops of this. It even says eight drops right there. And you're going to mix it. Then you put eight drops of this into the tube, mix it, and then you set it for five minutes. The other things that you're gonna test in your tank are also going to be five minutes for you to get the accurate test results. So once you've done this one, there's four test tubes in here. Just pick up another test tube and you're gonna do your other parameters here. So the next one I usually test is the nitrite. This takes five drops. This is the only one you need. Put five drops into that water, mix it up a little bit, set it, give it a five minute timer. And then the last one we do is going to be nitrate. And this is another two bottler. So you do 10 drops of this, you mix your little test tube and you shake this for 30 seconds. Then you add 10 drops of this, just like it says. And then you shake your test tube for a full minute. Then you set a five minute timer. And what comes out is something kind of like this. So this is an ammonia test that I did. This is old, I did this a couple of days ago, but this is yellow. It gives you a color here. And what you do is you take this little thing here, it tells you what you need to do, how to test with each one of these, and you hold it up to what you're testing. So we're testing ammonia and it's a little green. Again, this is from last week. It wasn't like that whenever I tested it, but you just go through and you say, okay, what color is my test tube against this? Okay, I got ammonia, it's a little bit high. Obviously it will be if you let it sit. <clears throat> this is my nitrite and you can see that it's pretty blue and that's exactly where we want it to be. You want your ammonia to be here on the low end. If it spikes a little bit, you might wanna do a water change. Nitrite needs to be blue. This needs to always be here. If you have a spike, you might be crashing on your tank cycle. And then the last one that we look at here, pull the last one out is this nitrate. Now you can see this is pretty dark red. It was about here whenever I tested it, which means that it's still within okay parameters, but once we start getting into this deep orange and this deep red, that can be toxic to your animal. So can high levels of ammonia or nitrite. So you wanna make sure you're following this. And if you forget anything, you can come back to this video and watch it again, obviously, for some tips and tricks. Water changes are going to be integral into getting your tanks cycle for a long amount of time to be stable. So typically doing a water change, small water change every day should not be a problem. <clears throat> Some people do it once a week. Some people do it every other day. It really depends on your tank setup, what animals you have in there and how dirty they are. Axolotls are really dirty. That's why we have Frankie in a tank without anything on the bottom, no substrate and just basic decor in there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull out Frankie. I'm gonna drain the water out of his tank. We're gonna pull him out. We're gonna put him into a quarantine tub and I'm gonna put his filter in there with him in the quarantine tub, and then we're going to refill his tank, and we're gonna put the filter back in there to jump start it, and then we're gonna let it sit, and we're gonna make sure we monitor Frankie, and make sure his little gills, those little comp ball things, make sure that those go away. So we're gonna do a water change every day on Frankie, 100% water change, every single day until we see his gills getting better. And then we'll probably keep him in quarantine for at least a week after that to ensure that the fungus completely goes away and that we can check the quarantine tank, make sure that it's good to go and his real tank, make sure it's good to go before we put him back in. Let's get started. All right. So we got Frankie's tank right here. This is what I keep him in, it's a 20 gallon long. You can see there's no substrate on the bottom. We got our sponge filter over there and we're gonna take all the water out of here, take Frankie out of here. We're gonna take the filter out. We're gonna put everything back in with fresh water and then we're going to take Frankie and put him into this guy. This is my quarantine tub for Frankie. I have a shoebox size one that's exactly like this for small things, like if I just need to keep him in there for maybe a day or something like that. Because Frankie's gonna go into quarantine and probably be there for a few weeks, we're gonna use the big tub so he's more at home, he's got some places to swim, it's not so cramped. And we're gonna filter all the water on here with this siphon. This is probably my best friend, getting water out of the tank, the siphon works amazing. 
It's got this little plunger thing here to help suck all the water out so I don't have to use my mouth to suck it. And then we're going to fill everything back up, fill this up, put tanky, Frankie into this tank, Frankie into tanky. And then we're going to make sure that every day we change this water out and we test the parameters of our big tank to make sure that it is cycling the way that it should. It should pretty much cycle almost automatically within the first couple of days because we have used filter media in here from his tank, which is already established. So we'll give his, uh, maybe his filter a quick rinse and then we'll put it back in here. I already cleaned it out last month, really good. Pardon me, Ooh, really good. So that filter shouldn't need a whole bunch of cleaning. We're just going to rinse it out and then put it back in to make sure that there's fungus in there, that it's at least trying to clean that out. All right, let's do a time lapse of this. Let's see what we got. All right, guys, so there you have it. Got the tank, it's all emptied out there behind me. I got Frankie and his little quarantine tank there. I'm gonna be leaving the big tank for him, just no water. We're gonna probably be ordering a new shelving unit for him to be put on with the other fish tank that we have and possibly anything else we're asking, adding to our menagerie of animals here. So once that gets here, I'll set that up and then fill tanky. Fill Frankie's tanky <laughs> back up with water and get it cycled, but I don't want to put any water in it and then have to move it and start that all over again. So once the new shelving unit arrives, we'll put the tank over there and we'll set it back up. Probably do another video on that and how we set it up and what we use to set it up. But we got Frankie quarantined. That's good. He got a little bit upset when we moved him. I typically don't handle my axolotl. They don't like being touched, it stresses them out. So I only touch him when I have to and it stressed him out. So he got a little bit sick to his stomach and he uh, burped up a little bit of his worms that he had for last night's dinner. So we're just gonna keep doing 100% daily water changes on him, making sure he's okay. And then we're gonna set his tank back up once we get the new shelving unit. Hopefully his fungus will go away and he'll start feeling better. And we'll put him in his new tank and he'll be good to go. But I appreciate you guys watching the video make sure you smash the like button go subscribe hit the notification bell and hopefully we'll see you on the next video